Trump puts on his tinfoil hat. Are we about to enter the purge? Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. Well, Trump, I think, is really starting to lose it now. I really think... I thought he was losing it by the last episode we did. Yeah, I really, really, really think that he's he's on the edge. And I think he's getting extremely desperate. What I'm about what we're about to read together um, is what he posted at 8.34, I think, a.m. I I don't know if he took it down or not. But you remember the situation with brother where he was shoved to the ground. The old guy? The old guy. The 75-year-old yeah. guy yeah. was shoved to the ground and all that. Okay, so here's what Mr. Trump said. Buffalo protesters shoved by police could be an Antifa provocateur. 75-year-old Martin Gugino was pushed away after appearing to scan police communications in order to black out their equipment at OANN. I watched. He fell harder than he was pushed. Was aiming scanner. Could this be a setup? Uh, so the 75 year old guy that the cops shoved and, and I, to, to my knowledge is still in serious or critical condition. He's saying that this is an Antifa person and he was trying, the whole thing is a setup where he fell harder than he was pushed and cracked his own skull all so that he could make the police department look bad. This is something that you find on the fringes of, like, radical alt-right craziness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a president in the United wow. States. This is mind-boggling. This is bad. This is very... Th this shows... This shows the... That, to me, I think... So, so here's what I've been doing for the last two or three years on this channel. I have been constantly saying that... Um, not every Trump person is a psychotic, racist, crazy mm -hmm. person. Yeah. I've said, I said there's a small group of them who are psychotic, ra crazy, racist people, but the vast majority of them are just disaffected, disenfranchised people who are going through extreme economic duress and are looking to him to provide a solution. But this type of tweet only appeals to the very small... Now, I've got a Nazi in this forum. I talk mm -hmm. about him a lot. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think, inshallah, he's a brother in Christ. So once he starts hanging out with Jesus after a while, I don't believe he's going to continue to be a Nazi. But, but I love brother. But even he, I read everything he comments. I can't read everything everybody comments, but that brother, I read him all the time because I love everybody who's going to be that honest about who they are. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of Nazis running around, but they're too scared to tell you that they're actual mm -hmm. Nazis. This brother will tell you. Absolutely, I'm a fascist. Mm -hmm. And even he, to my knowledge, hasn't come up with such a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. To me, this is Trump putting all his chips on the table and saying, okay, there's a giant backlash to me right now and my fascist stormtrooper yeah. uh, police. And so, it, look, look, this is how crazy my friend is. This guy says that Trump is not fascistic enough. Like this is how crazy oh my, my friend is. Wow, that's... Brother, I love you. You look me in the eye. You know I love you. But you're crazy as hell, my dude. There's like literally something wrong with your mind. It, you know, we were talking. He, he was like, yeah. Da, da, da. He was giving me some information. I was like, where do you get this information from? He goes, Infowars, Alex Jones. You know the guy that calls people goblins and says the gay frog stuff? I said, Alex Jones? So you know that brother's not, not completely all there. But even he <laughs> didn't come up with some crazy nonsense like wow. this. Trump has no idea about what is happening in the nation. Trump, Mr. Trump, um, here, here's the problem. During the Trayvon Martin situation, we did not riot. During the Eric Garner situation, we did not riot. During the Philando Castile situation, we did not riot. Tamir Rice, we did not riot. We've been eating this for years. And then, one of your stormtroopers put all 220 pounds on brother's neck for nine minutes. And I heard that he was calling out for his mother, who had been dead, among other things. And your other stormtrooper friends sat there and watched brother, straight out of my chest. watched brother die. And that pushed people over the edge. Mm -hmm. Red, yellow, black, and white pushed people over the edge. And now what ended up happening is white folks, because this is not a black 
versus white issue or anarchist versus police issue. This is you're either a racist or you're an anti-racist mm -hmm. issue. And the fact of the matter is most white folk are not cool with anybody. They could be purple and neon green. Most white folk are not cool with anybody dying the way that Mr. Floyd did. So what ended up happening was you had well-meaning white folk, black folk go hand in hand and say, you had a bunch of white folks say, look, man, we were wrong. You could even Roger Goodell got on TV and said they were wrong, Mr. Trump. So now you got these white folks, and these, these white folks are ready to put it on the line. Mm -hmm. I got one tweet where uh, this white lady, I mean, it's, it's actually a very sad tweet, but it's also, um, you, you're, you're kind of honored to be in the presence of some of these people because some of these people are, uh, you, you want to talk about real life heroes. Look at this tweet. Um, my buddy Mark Shea shared it, and it was an absolutely insane tweet, and I couldn't believe it. So there's like eight of us that lost an eye during Jeez. these protests, and we're starting to find and talk to each other, and it's hilarious. Three of us are going camping to clear our heads a bit and just process together, and God bless the internet, that, that makes this possible. So you've got people... Uh, the majority of them white who have literally lost an eye because your fascistic stormtroopers shot them in the face with oh, rubber bullets, so Mr. Trump. And now what you're seeing is you're seeing uh, white folks are saying, well, wait a second here. <laughs> this was only supposed to happen to them. But now, because they've joined forces with marginalized people, these stormtroopers are treating them just like they're treating the other black folks. You know what's really interesting? Everybody's seen the video where they shove, brother. I'm going to show you a video right now of a very hostile, belligerent, fearful, white, scared, scaredy cat. <laughs> Say it that way. I'm trying not to cuss. I was talking and, and uh, uh, brother told me like, hey, you shouldn't have said F Antifa. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do better, brother. See, uh, your boy, your brother, your brother Vin, he can take some criticism now. <laughs> so, here's, here's the video of a very, very fearful individual. Storm of light, black lives matter, fuck you. Peaceful, fuck you. Peaceful, 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 peaceful. Now, did you see how the police treated brother? He's yelling, screaming, cussing, middle finger, yanking signs. The cop, oh, all right, all right, it's a big joke. Huh? Wow. Huh? And, and then, of course, black people, we always got to be extra. So the young lady who took off the glasses to look in the eyes of the coward, she sent a, a care package to that, that crazy person's uh, wow. wife. Because she said, I know that you're not your husband. I can make the differentiation. And did you hear the battle cry from these thugs? Peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. Mm -hmm. And did you see how the officer treated that crazy, the only thug that was there? You see how the officer treated him? But then here's 75-year-old brother. And because he's on, the, he's on the, the side of justice, they shove brother down. And instead of Trump having, having the understanding, there's a lot of dynamics that go into that shove, Mr. Trump. Number one, he's 75 years old. Number two, he's white. Hello? <laughs> and you, instead of soundly condemning the police and leaving it at that, you're propping up some tinfoil hat conspiracy theory that he's Antifa. And this is another reason why I said Trump designating Antifa as a terrorist organization is absolutely dangerous and it will not, it's impossible that it's going to work. Because now look what happened. Now... He's calling this guy Antifa after he just called Antifa a terrorist, terrorist organization. Yeah. So let me tell you something. I know people that have that that uh, have dealt with Al Qaeda. Okay, mm -hmm. and let me tell you something. When you roll up on those boys and you crack a, a, an Al Qaeda member's skull, nobody feels bad for him. You know why? Because he's part of a terrorist organization. So when you slam that little seventy-five-year-old guy on the street. 
and then you victim blame him. It's and then he's he's saying that he's got some sort of weapon to to screw up the police and all the rest of it. Now keep in mind, this is the same unit that that all 57 of those guys quit the ERT because they were disgusted by how their two thuggish uh, brothers in blue were being treated. That should tell you everything you need to know about the good cops. Right. Me and Leah are having a, a back and forth about all these uh, supposed good cops on the, on, in the world. And I, I've said, if you've been in the force for more than five years and never filed an internal affairs report on, on any of these people, you're not a good cop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, me and Leah are always just going to go back and forth. But this is absolute madness. Trump is losing his mind. Yeah, that's, that's, wow. That is over the top. He, it, he has no awareness of where he actually is. Mm -hmm. He has no awareness of where he is. And it doesn't matter what happens with the economy, Mr. Trump. The prevailing zeitgeist is that your, your police force has been exposed. Now, now I got to take that back because it's not Trump's police force. Right. This is, listen, what is happening now is not Trump's fault. What is no? It is not well, Trump's fault. I'll, I'll tell you why, and then you go. Oh okay, no, you go. Go ahead. It's a it's a compilation of what's been happening for generations. Correct. But at the same time, when you are the president, then you you have to stand for some sort of law. He talks about law and order, but then he's not bringing law and order to the people that are supposed to bring law and order. Who's who's watching so, the Watchmen? Yeah, exactly. And right. that's what he should be doing. He shouldn't be defending their Correct. horrible actions right. and trying to switch this up. Like we can all see the video. We all saw what happened. But this 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 goes into the mindset of some of the more hardcore Trump fathers followers. Now I'm not going to name this brother cuz I don't want to embarrass him. But this the most hardcore Trump followers and Leah is accepted from this because Leah will say, "Nah, no, that's not." Mm -hmm. But the most hardcore Trump followers will deny obvious reality. Like, for example, I brought up, you know, we're talking, oh, there's no racism in the police. This guy said, there's no racism in the police force. And uh, uh, it, he said, it has nothing to do with racism. It's all abuse of power. And I said, bruh, the FBI <laughs> released a memo talking about how you had entire sheriff's departments and agencies infiltrated with... Uh, skinheads and KKK members and you had the entire uh, right. LEO group over there right. in Virginia. He goes, that was in 2006 and uh, the, the uh, and Snopes said that there aren't racists in the police force. I was like, what? Like, this is complete denial of reality. So, in you're telling me, person, I don't want to name you because I don't want to embarrass you, that in 14 years, they had uh, KKK and sh whole sheriff's departments in Los Angeles full of uh, skinheads. And in 14 years, all of that's changed. And now it has nothing to do with racism. Amazing. <laughs> and then, and then I did the, I did, I showed, I talked about that whole LEO class in Virginia. They all got bounced because they were all doing the mm -hmm. Seed Hale thing. Yep. And, uh, and, and he goes, he goes, uh, another one of the crazy Trump people said, why are you posting this? This was last year. So it's this very strange, like, denial of reality, denial of what you see, saying that stuff is in the past when it's either six months ago, because this was the, the day before, uh, the, this was December 30th, 2019, when that, that whole class got, got done. And, uh, and that's because they were dumb enough to take a picture. Do you think any of us believes that that's the only group of people where that's ever happened? But these silly people, they say, oh, that was last year. <laughs> Like I said, I don't want to mention brother's name because uh, I don't like I'm him real. as I don't like him as much as my Nazi friend. But but you know I don't, I'm not out here trying to embarrass anybody. But th but Trump is is now validating every superlative that these people have been saying about him since the beginning. Uh, yeah, these people have been saying the man's a fascist. They yep. said he's racist. They said he's this. And I you know I've always held a line and said. Show me the, the policy. Yep. Show me the data. And now we've got the policy. I said a week ago, I said, calling Antifa, I, everybody knows me. Go go look. I've never said one positive thing about Antifa in my life. But I said, calling Antifa a terrorist organization is dangerous because they're decentralized and they don't have a, a an actual leader. So now I, I predict, well, I didn't, everybody predicted it. Now you can pin Antifa on anybody. And now this 75-year-old guy I'm supposed to believe is Antifa because you said so? Trump, <laughs> you see, you know, when the, when the white guy is on the wrong side, 
they know how to exercise restraint. They have a big smile on their face. When the white guy's on the wrong sides, you shove them in the street. You're, you're, you're shooting these people's eye out. You're permanently damaging these people because they have the audacity to go up against your police state, Mr. Trump. And when you say law and order, it is a code word now for the Gestapo tactics that you and your friends are employing. That's why you had that other crazy guy talking about uh, sending the national, sending the 101st mm -hmm. Airborne. <laughs> First of all, not even the National Guard. Anybody that knows about the military, the 101st is it's specifically designated for warfare. These guys are these legendary warriors, and those are the people that these people are telling to send into the streets, not even the National Guard. Mm -hmm. What in the world? He's losing it. He's absolutely losing it. And the tragic thing is, is you know, I, I know you're out on Trump, but I'm never going to vote for Biden. Um, because I'm sticking to my principles, but I don't, I think, I think Trump is going to lose in a landslide now because he's completely lost the plot. He doesn't, he's only appealing to, it's weird because I'm like, oh no, those are only a small group of crazy people that would, would say something like that about that 75 year old guy. But, but he, it seems to me that he believes that that group is a lot bigger than it is. It seems to me that Trump actually agrees with the people that have been stereotyping his mm -hmm. movement the entire time. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, I don't have any idea about why you'd post such a thing. Now, maybe he took it down. I don't know. I, I initially saw that and I said, no, that's the onion. I was like, there is no way that that happened. He's unbelievable. Uh, that, this whole thing with the 75-year-old guy, there are two, two occasions where I said, no, that's the onion. The first one was when the they all retired at the same, they all resigned the ERT at the same time. Because they were disgusted. Because they were dis I said, there's no way that that's real. And I had to validate that by four sources until I, 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 I believed it was real. I could not believe that Trump actually did this. I, I hope he, t he probably took it down. I'm not sure. But what a freaking disaster. What an absolute and crazy disaster this whole thing has become. Um, he bungled the coronavirus thing, and uh, he, 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 he's completely mismanaging and mishandling this situation. This guy does not know how to read the tea leaves, and he does not understand the signs of the time at all. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Trump, when a frail white 75-year-old man gets his skull crushed on TV for all to see, and top of that, they lied and said that he tripped himself. And Trump engages in this victim blaming. He says, I washed. He fell harder than he was pushed. Could this be a setup? Unbelievable. And they lied on the report. He doesn't mention any of that at all. He was 75. The man was so freaking tall. I don't. When he got shoved, he was trying to catch himself. Well, we we don't we don't, we don't have to break this down. I mean, this is this is this is classical uh, victim blaming. This is classical victim blaming for this guy. Um, is. Here's the New York Times. A 75-year-old protester sho shoved to the ground last week by Buffalo Peace is not as President Trump falsely tweeted on Tuesday a wily Atifa provocateur. Friends say Martin Gugino is an old-school peacenik who can, astonishly, who can be astonishingly nerdy. So he's a peacenik. He's a guy that was against the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of peaceniks over there in Israel who do not support what they're doing to these Palestinian people. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and okay, Brother Gugino responded. So he's he's in good shape so he he was able to respond so it looks oh, like wow. he's it looks like he's going to recover bless god but i mean you've got everything in this tweet victim blaming tin foil tin foil hat stuff covering up for evil people i mean this is one of those like um don't believe your lying eyes listen to what i have to say you know, this is like the yeah. 19, this is a 1984 doublespeak stuff Disgusting. where if you read any Orwellian literature, a lot of people like to talk about Orwell when it's talking about the government, like, you know, spying on you and things. But one of the major things about uh, 1984 was that the government was able to actually shape reality, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the doublespeak and all the rest of it. And everything was was flipped on its head. And so that's that's the other part of the Aurelian dystopia motif that people don't understand. So now I'm not supposed to believe what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is a bunch of stormtroopers shove a, a very frail, skinny, 75-year-old man to the ground, so much so that brother couldn't get 
brace himself from his fall and blood's coming out of his ear and he's not moving. That's what I saw, Mr. Trump. But now I'm supposed to believe that he fell harder than he was shoved. <laughs> You're out of your mind, bro. He's losing it. I'm telling you. He's losing it. And now, all the superl... And, and, and again, guys, go watch all the Middle America videos. Go see all the leftists bemoaning me for saying that I'm biased and all the rest of it. I have been down the line with this dude. But, but now, he is validating everything that people have been saying about mm -hmm. him. You're losing it. Mm -hmm. The next episode, we're going to be talking about this concept of defunding the police because it is not what people assume that it is. And again, I have to disagree with the great Isabel Jimenez. If you want to be part of our community, dear listener, facebook.com backslash America Middle. What a giant cluster this has become. You know, I looked at Joe Biden and I chuckled. I said, there's no way in the world that Joe Biden's going to win. And, and now... Uh, DNC, the, the fact that we could have had Bernie as an easy, I mean, come on guys, if Bernie was running right now, people would be saying, let's have the elections now, let's not wait for November. Mm -hmm. uh, we came so close to eight years of Bernie Sanders, but here we go. And can you imagine how Bernie would have been handling this situation? Mm. Obama, Bush. Anybody else? I was just going to say anybody. There's literally no president in my lifetime, because all of I've had Bush, Clinton, and, and the Obamas. There's, there's, there's no other president that I could see. Like, he doesn't even have the sense to do the embarrassing, you know, Zonia hit me up. She's like, the the uh, the Nancy Pelosi thing, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Here's our Nancy Pelosi picture. She's out here kneeling with yeah. the African, uh, the African colors and stuff. Putting her, <laughs> he got the Lion King thing in the background. Yeah, she's we'll out there kneeling with the little her. African. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's kneeling with the African thing. It's the most cringiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Then, then somebody had to pick her up and help her up because you know she's all old. It was just in back. Then I think Zoe is right. It's the cringiest moment of all time. Everybody had the sense of mind to do that, Trump. And nobody was asking you to kneel, brother, because we know how you feel about us. Nobody's asking you to kneel, family. But how could you put a how could you do this? <laughs> what in the world? Alright, alright. <laughs> Here we go. You can't make this stuff up. Look, man, anytime I see one of these things, I've got to look it up and I say, there's no way this has mm -hmm. to be the onion. Mm -hmm. I, I I said it one day, I said, this is the onion. It's mm -hmm. not a real story. Don't don't take it seriously. And then I looked it up four times and sure enough it was real. It's not the onion. It's real. And <laughs> he really did this. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Brother Gugino and all the, I gotta tell you guys, all the white protesters, all the uh, white folks who's posting stuff on Facebook and having their friends, you know, go after them. Everything that y'all have done, we appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm not gonna be one of these guys that say, took you long enough. Hey, we appreciate it. Now these folks it are does paying. my heart good to see Now it. these folks are paying prices, man. People getting their eyes shot out. I mean,. God Almighty, help our country. Hey, if you're a praying person, pray for our country. This right here, though. <laughs> Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys. Stop lying, Trump. To lie in self. <laughs>